You're on. Good afternoon. Come on, Hannah. Come on. <laughs> she missed it. Come on. Hi. How's it going, guys? This is my name is Jamie Fang, and Hannibal is perfect in one one piece. However big she is. Anyways, from that little fiasco we had last Saturday, she fell on her head. Anyways, so my name is Jamie Fang. Um, the youngest of the Fangs. I'd like to thank our director Jeff Young for always forever being here on Saturday. My husband Roger Lee, the cameraman, and Brian, Brian, our IT guy, right? Our assistant, Norman's assistant, my assistant. So what are we going to talk about today? I actually got my act together and thought about it yesterday. So we're going to try to do the mounting uh, with these fancy little mounting board cups, whatever we're going to call it that you could attach. So we've been using it for a few years now. Everything we use in-house and never really want to sell everything, but then people obviously see what we do and want to buy it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to take the cakey off and how we're gonna plant it. I already did a few earlier. So we'll have a few already here on the counter. So I'm gonna need a um, close up, honey, because we're gonna take some cakey off. Beautiful plant, right? Try to work from from the back. So, try to take the cakey off that's big enough for us to use. These are obviously borderline, so we're gonna, I'm just going to take enough that um, we can start. Um, all the shears are already pre-sterilized, burned. So we learn as well, forever learning along with you guys. Before everybody would just snap off the cakey, right? So we find that when you snap off, then you would have to let it dry. Right? Otherwise, I'm going to get damp and might get rotted. So Aunt Julie is actually the best grower in house. She's been experimenting and she's saying that we have to do it this way. It's not snapping it. It's just go ahead and cut a little bit of it. The stem away from it. So basically, we're not going to hurt any um, where the root system is. And <clears throat> if we pot right away or mount right away, we're not going to rot it out. And Jenny, right? Jessica. Jessica. We have a new guest, Jessica's in-house, um, to join us for the podcast for the first time. Our cameraman and our directors and everybody's going like this to me, so I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Actually, you guys can't see me, right? So I can make funny faces. <laughs> so again, these, I think it's borderline. Um, if, you, if you could, leave it on. Here's another good piece. So here we are. We're not gonna we're not gonna take this piece off and make a damage. We're just gonna cut a little bit off of it. And here we are from another plant. That two right here. Of course, Auntie got me one with a whole bunch of babies that is really not all that mature. We had a lot of um, walk-in client this morning, so everybody's running around. Just gonna take extra there we go again we're cutting a little bit um <clears throat> so we don't damage what we're trying to do one, two, three, four, five, six. let's grab one more so how's everybody doing jeff is everybody online anybody online yeah we have a lot of people actually we have about uh, 60 people wow good afternoon again my name is jamie fang the youngest of the fang and we do have um our back Oh, Start I'm putting. Just asking, what is this plant? Dendrobium. Do I have a name? Or, this guy. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it to you. Okay. Yeah. What? Can I give me an NF number, please? Yeah. Our lovely assistant. So, like I was saying, our back, we, we started putting everything on YouTube, right, Jeff? Just a couple weeks behind. It's under Norman's Orchid. So, for. You could get your. Actually, people outside you guys should just join our um, YouTube. Um, it's under Norman's or get like and subscribe. Okay, so here, this is what we're working with. And I think you guys seen this. It, we were sold out and it came back into um, stock. 
instead of trying to find the right branch and stuff. Hey, Hannah. Okay, so this is the top. This is where you're actually going to use to hang. So don't start this way and then have to realize that you did it the wrong way and then have to rip everything apart. And trust me, we all done it before when we're all talking to each other, we forget. It's like when you put on your t-shirt, you want to see which is your front, which is your back. You're going to do the same thing when you when you start with your mounting or potting whatsoever. So this is your top. Since this dendrobium grows downwards, so I'm actually going to reverse myself and work from the bottom. Does that make sense? Bottom up. Yeah. Okay. Because the plant's going to go this way. If you work from the right side up, the plant's going to go this way. And how are you going to hang it? And then you can essentially hang it this way. Then we're, we're not doing this right. So I want to make sure we understand that. It's easy mistake. And you have to do it. I mean, I learned it once. <laughs> Crap. I have to do it and I have to rip everything apart. So here's your top. Here's your open. But obviously, this plant goes downwards. So we're going to plant this way. Make sense? Any question? It's kind of confusing. Okay. So instead of just doing one, I'm going to grab two. Her. Because we want instant gratification. <laughs> Do you need me to move the camera? Yeah. So you want this first piece to be tight. First moss on, the, on there to be tight. Because this is your whole base. You want to grab onto it, but don't squeeze it. You want to make sure you got a good hold of it. Then again, don't forget, you don't want to do it backwards. Here, here's the front of your plant, okay? This is the back of your plant. So make sure you're not going to do it backwards. You're not going to wear your tag side of a t-shirt um, in the front. So this, you're going to do the same thing with the plant. So here's the front of the plant. The plant is MC97. What is it called? Uh, Dendrobium aphylum. Thank you. I don't have my glasses. Aphylum. MC97, Jeff. So you're going to grab it real tight. Put your, put your moss around it. Then you're going to put your second piece. I'm, gonna put your, I'm putting the long, big piece on the bottom. And then we actually wash the moss three times when I get all the acid out. And then we kind of make it damp. You don't want to be so wet it's going to um, rot out the plant. See, I cannot even squeeze any water out. But it's it's moist. I should say moist. Is that Gia? Hi, Gia. Okay. Can you see this, Roger? I'm going to just plant. We got everything facing down, right? This is essentially how the plant's going to go in. We're just going to put it in, use two fingers on each hand, and just kind of shove it in. And it's okay to have some roots out because they're all air roots, so I don't mind having some roots out because I want to make sure um, the roots is going to survive. Sometimes you put all the roots in there, um, it might rot out. So we have the first plant in. So let's grab the second plant. And if, it, if you need help, you could actually pair it together first, and then it would be easier for you. Again, I've been doing this for so long. It's easier for me to do. Again, this is the back side. This is the front side. So don't start off going this way, because the plant will be... You're gonna wear your tag in the front. So this is the front side. Grab the first piece. Do you need to fill in the, the rest of the Um no. Yeah, that's a good question, Roger. Do we need to fill in the bottom? Well we'll get to that as soon as I can focus and make sure I do this right. The first piece are just tuck tightly, because we don't want to lose any. So here's a question. Do you want to plant this way or plant this way? Since everything is going downwards, we're going to just face everything the same way. Otherwise, you're going to be having a one crazy dendrobium. Which one smells so good? This one smells good, huh? This is a blush pink one. Yeah. yeah I have it's like kind of like 
strawberry, what well, raspberry kind of smell. Really good. So you're gonna grab this, the whole thing, two fingers on each hand, and just try to tuck it in there. And if you're not used to it, you probably would be over mossing things, but that's okay. Practice makes perfect, correct? Is everybody liking pre-show? Because if they don't like it, they can fire me, and then I don't have to be here. No, nope. you're hired. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I had to break it up. Otherwise, you get that Norman guy. You know, he's so not. We are asking is the moss pre moistened We already went through that. Yes, this, we did. This pre moistened Yeah, the moss definitely out. has to be pre moistened You don't want to start with a dry moss because then it's going to be really hard to wet it to water it. Okay, like we all discussed, when you want you to repot anything, you don't want to drench it. You could you can mist it. See how it's a little wet, see? But that's on the bottom. The top is already dry. Oops, I just watered Norma's desk. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, I had to be here to break it up, otherwise Norman's kinda dry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, who sold for more? <laughs> okay, again, remember you you're don't want to sound like a broken record. The, the top of your leaf is going to be up on top. You're going to start tightly. Again, where's your front? Check your front because I don't want to do it backwards either. kind of nice weather now in California. We're actually cooling off a little bit. I mean, the last two weeks is kind of unbearable. Okay, so we're going to pot it in. And voila, we have our planting. And this all will relax eventually. Eventually, this will relax a little bit more. You could just gently making sure all the moss are in. Then Mr. Cameraman had a question of why, are we, why am I not filling the bottom filled? Um, like I said, um, we learned by our mistake. If you pack it so tight, then the plant has um, no air space. So therefore, it's it's better to have some air space down there because ultimately your your root system and the plant is already covered with the plant. Remember we did it so tight, um, so the plants are fine to grow. Air space, air space, air space. The top we do want to fill it up. One more question, Jamie. Yes. What do you use to rinse the moss in? Norman usually says Fison. Fison, yeah. Well, actually, yo. Oh. Hey, Van, I have a picture for you. Don't forget, I have a picture for you. Ben is uh, our buddy, my friend of 20 years that he was shopping in LA. Now, when I retired, he kind of came along with me and came back to the nursery with me. See how that looks? So since the moss is wet, you don't have to water the plant. So you could just kind of mist it. And then you can make your save your dry cleaning hooks um, hangers. You can use that to to make your hook. But I have something easier for me to do. I have carpet tunnel, so I, I try to make my life easier. So there's already holes in there to, to have you to make your own hanger. So there you go. We just kind of make our own hanger. Voila, it's like a little cute little purse. These, you could actually make them into two or threes. This one we have it in two sections. So you could actually, we have some on in the greenhouse that we make it into threes. Do you sell it like that? This? Yeah, we, we sell them. Um, when we travel in the shows, we actually will take a couple samples and then sell the containers. But we have so many requests, we now more take more than a couple. We take a dozen. We have them in-house here. 
And hey guys, I, I wanted to just take this opportunity to brush up on our the whole purpose of this group, which is no drama, all happy happy. I had my first day off Tuesday, and then I was really not online, except I was brought online because I have a lot of PM, and I don't want to nag everybody, but I was not happy when I had 186 comment of drama. and. You know that that really takes a lot out of it that was not my purpose so no more um, you can tell I'm still a little upset no more mistreating each other no more calling each other name if somebody has any issues don't try to defend your friends we're all adult they can defend themselves when you have five people try to defend one person it multiplies by five times so we went from just one person deal with each other to five times times five times times and that's how we got to 186 and the funny thing is Norman shut it off of all people Norman shut off the comment I didn't even think he knows how to do that <laughs> but anyway so we don't want to go there um, two people did leave one asked if if he should leave I said it's, it's your choice so he did leave and I wanted him to but I wanted to be his choice so no more none of that we're going back to pretty flowers how to grow <laughs> no more why my shipment is not here that's not the forum for that call support deal with support support deal with FedEx we're not gonna be here try to help you track down your box if you want to say it's down the street you're really excited we're all for you <laughs> we're all here for you so that just keep it that way and unfortunately I'm gonna start cracking it down Jeff and I are gonna start cracking it down if it's gonna be any more of this kind of mistreating each other we're just gonna delete you that's it no more no more because we're adults let's just not go there so this is all set auntie pretty <laughs> auntie came to inspect my job okay so I started this wire basket at home to create more space for myself um, I had these on my wood shutter and then actually had a lot of requests to buy them so we decided to carry them, but not on our website because we cannot afford to have this with our orchid box if it, you know, cut into our, cut into our spikes and stuff. So people wanted to know dimension. I think I put the dimension on. I think it's four by six, three by. I don't remember, but it's basically it fits each size. There's a small one, and we'll also fit our the four inch and I like these at home because it's airy so when you hang out the plants are still getting the good circulation so I brought a hundred in for myself in the nursery unfortunately we already sold them all uh, except I have this one set we sold them all and if you like them just p uh, private message me or actually email me it's better then well, we can help you out there um, another next thing we need to kind of talk about is I think there's a confusion for the new new members as far as as far as um, what does NF stands for and what does MC stands for NF is our Norman Fang we created that what 30 years ago 86 Eight, 1986 Norman Fang um, came out with the abbreviation NF that's just his name Norman Fang and it's actually ceiling ceiling meaning it's a it's a hybrid cross so we're not sure which parentage is going to be taken after. So the NF, if you purchase an NF number, please don't email us if we put you, uh, we gave you a wrong tag. That's possible, but um, we're not perfect. But we had another post. Um, this person wasn't happy, I guess, with the one she bloomed, but which I thought was beautiful. A lot of us share the same sentiment. So. And if it's, you have two parentage, I think Norma would put in the mom and a dad up there. So, we, you know, our imagination is where it goes. You, just, you don't know who it's going to take after. So if you if you don't it's like... like huh? She and I don't look alike. <laughs> I'm cuter. Anyways, um, if you don't like the guessing part, then buy don't MC. buy the NF. Buy the MC. MC is the Mary Clones. Mary Clones, it just is going to look exactly exactly like that. Duplicate, except when it comes to Holoquin, it might vary a little bit. Um, so buy the MC, do not buy the NF. The NF are hybrids, it may come different, it may look different from the parentage. Um, 
well, not, it might be better, actually be better from, you know, combined. But without the NF, if we stop doing the NF, we're not going to have the MC. We're not going to be able to clone anything decent. Uh, on my jumpers, we had three plants from the same cross last week, and they were all different, right, Gia? Every one of them were different, and every one of them were gorgeous. So you never know. So I started the jumpers because obviously Jamie always pulled the best, the best shape, just because I'm not a judge. <laughs> Norman, you're like pulling my leg today. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> stop, Norman. <laughs> so everyone is different. So if you if you're not comfortable, don't buy the NF. If you like what you know, Surprise. then buy the Norman. I'm gonna come pull your leg when it's your section. <laughs> so Jamie's um, jumper is what you see is what you get. So that's what I pull from the best for the um, from the crosses. So you can buy. From the jumper. All right. Oh, that's beautiful. Is that a jacket tee? Yes. Oh my oh god. My. It looks like Alba. It looks like Alba. Don't that show Elaine. Like, that would be like one of the first ones, right? Yeah. Uh, this is the first one. This is like one of the first ones. First here one. In the, US. the best one. The first one. Well, I'm, I'm not sure about. That's only the smallest one. Smallest one. Well, we can't say because the world is so big, right? Yeah, but one of one of the first ones in the U.S. Yeah. So they're starting to bloom. Everybody can get happy. Get happy. Is there anything else I was supposed to cover? Since Norman kind of no, 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 no. got, me, got me off. See, then always make sure. Here, honey, can I give you this, friend? Yeah. are pretty. Aren't they pretty? Yes. Always make sure you have extra moss and house. Because as you water it, you're going to lose moss. We're going to just tightly fill it in. We're not going to jam it and pack it so tight that plant's not going to have any air. Remember, they all like air circulation. Since I have it up here and I have moss handy, I'm just going to fill it up. And I did some arrangement yesterday. If you guys like my arrangement, we have the Facebook group. Um, my group is called The Arrangement. Please go up there and post your pictures. Yeah. Enjoy my old uh, arrangements. And we could go from there. Mr. Fang, are you ready? Where's Hannah? Oh. Never ready. You're never ready. So again, we did, we did, actually we did three. So we, Norman ran off. He said he wants to go get some water. So you could attach it. I'm not strong enough with my carpet tunnel. So basically you just push it in. Norman, you want to push for me? Because I don't, my, I don't have strength in my hand. Like Legos. They're like Legos. I can, Legos. my hand is. Like lock. I know, it's got to go in really tight. It's kind of hard to get in. You should, you should put it together before you put them in there. I know, but sometimes I may not know I okay. want to do all three. Brothers. See? 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 Just see? See? Okay, I guess she I would. She just want me to do it. I just, that's how, that's how I get everybody to do it. Can you show me how you do this? <laughs> that's the only advantage of being a woman. <laughs> the only advantage. Oh. See, I can't do it again. Carpet tunnel, carpet tunnel. This is from years of experience, um, lift service. years of um, designing at the shop. Okay, so today we did a quick mounting. Is there any questions, Jeff? Okay. Oops. We're all good? Roger's like, move on. Hannah? Come on, Hannah. Let's say goodbye. Roger, Norman, are you ready? <laughs> See, Hannah works on this as her calling. So, say goodbye, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. <laughs> Alright, so I did all three. Wow, all right. way. Did you do it by yourself? Or did I you did it there? all by myself today. Oh my, oh my goodness. Not bad for a housewife. That's right. Oh. That's right. And a business major. That's right. Anyway, uh, do we have any new member today? Who are you, Norman? Oh. They always want to introduce myself, that guy. I'm um, nice said Norman Fong, and I started a nursery. Uh, in 1986, so it's just that's how I Norman's orchid. Anyway, uh, this is one of my prized orchid, Norman's Mist. 
And I don't know how many weeks it's been here. Three months or more. Now. It's been here for three months? Three months or more, yeah. As long as I've been here. Yeah, every, yeah. every week and it still looks the same. Yeah, it's, I left Sunny's term frozen in time. And it's real, it's not plastic. <laughs> yeah, it's not silk. Okay, how many of you have been growing, uh, have experience growing Phenolopsis Gigantia? Any show of hand? Oh, not many. Yeah. Do you know what Gigantia looks like? Uh, okay, this is Gigantia. And Gigantia is native from Indonesia. And I'm gonna show you a little bit trick uh, from many years of killing Gigantia. <laughs> well, first of all, never buy, never, never buy uh, freshly imported uh, Gigantia. Uh, I don't think that it can be a pop uh, issue anymore, uh, but if you are one of the old timer, before 1975, uh, they used to collect Gigantia from the jungle of Indonesia. And the leaf can be this big and waxy. So this is a typical of Gigantia kind of green leaf or white leaf okay it's actually really gorgeous and the dragon here get the name because it got really giant because the bonus we went to the first discover the dragon here uh, the leaf can be as big as the elephant's ear that's how big they are but so everybody was really scared and even us today People are, are scared of Jacantia. This is blooming size, by the way. This is about four to five years. The only thing about Jacantia is slow grower. So never buy a, what I call eyelash style from eBay. <laughs> no, seriously. Eyelash style is like one year out of flask. And they just, they really slow grower. Let a professional like us to grow them to a near, for, uh, at least seed inside. When I say seeding size, but minimum, you don't want to buy them less than six inches. Okay, six to eight inches is about minimum two and a half year. And that's the safest size to grow. Okay, anything smaller than that, you know, uh, I have heard some customer who, have, who I grow from, from Frask, and they, they, they maybe less than 50% survive. You don't sell this one right now, NF2533? Uh, that that one haven't released yet, but I want just gonna show you an example. But this You're is teasing the us. huh? Teasing us. Well, actually, I was pouring this, <laughs> and sometimes the sales department is went on Eric. <laughs> <laughs> the sales department because they had to what well, uh one thing about going through a process before they go onto the website, we have to go make sure that the the genus the spelling is right. If they got an award, we gotta check the award data with the American Orchid Society. And then we gotta have some of our, our special, like Richard Hall, helping to write a description. And a lot of work, you know, go on. Uh, because our, our, we see our website is not just a sales site because there's lots of dis information. We try to write as many description as possible for that is a learning, is a learning for you because in, it's actually better than in the old days uh, in the catalog you can only so much space okay but now with the internet uh, with a website we can go I, the other day Richard Hall write a very big long or very this long or detailed information on the parentages the, the father side the mother side and how they come up together it's a lot a lot of information so this is why before you venture before you venture out to buy any species do your research. When you buy orchid, whether it's online or in person at an orchid show, the label is very important. You see here? You have Jagantia, Jaho Delight, and Jaho Best. Obviously, this is a strand from my good friend Jaho's orchid. And it's just like pedigree, you know, garbage in, garbage out. If you want to grow them, Jagantia, which is a very slow grower, you want to get it from the best possible breeding Pathogen as possible, just like when you get your uh, uh, dog, for example, you want to get it like Jamie's uh, Hannibal. She can come from a very, very good breeder, and that little tiny little energy bunny is so much personality. So, and, so this is the, the Jagantia uh, form, and I'm gonna just show you. So, Jagantia does not, this is actually blooming inside at all. And I usually what I like to do is 
Jacantia. Never buy the jungle plant if you even see one. It's all about the root. You see here? And they, if you go Jacantia, they prefer the dough, they do not like to dry out, okay? Now, in the old days, when I go Jacantia, I thought, oh gosh, they're from Indonesia. Must be hot, steamy. And so I'm, I usually would try to duplicate that. Then that was a big mistake, okay? I killed enough of Jacantia from the baby plant. Uh, so that's just why I said you never buy baby plant uh, seeding before six inches. Once they get to six and six to eight inches, they, the plant are more forgiving to more stress. And uh, what they like about Jack and Tia is remember now, even though they're from Indonesia, they actually from the mountainside of the Indonesia. Indonesia have a lot of island. Okay, some of the island have a higher attitude. They're not the really lowland, lowland, that really hot and steamy, like uh, Benina of, of Malaysia. Okay, totally different. The last 10 years, I've been going a lot with this type because it's very important because a lot of uh, some of the, the, what I'm going to show you, for example, the Harlequin all had Jack and tea in the background. So it's very important for me to master the species. Okay. Now, this is a perfect primary example. Uh, this is only this is found enough to jack in here old frame and young hall got AMAOS. Now this is a historical print. Now I have this print for about 15 years. Can you see the, see the size? Uh, this is from Young Hall, and but the the print actually did it about 30, 40 years ago. Uh, you see the name here? Is Princess Mikasa crossed with Jack and Tia. And Princess Mikasa, remember the yellow one that have Princess Mikasa? Princess Mikasa is a primary hybrid between Emboriensis and Valencia. So this plant pretty much only has three species involved. The regular form of Emboriensis, the Valencia, and Jack and Tia. But you can tell, if I didn't tell you the name, it can really look like Jacantia. So Jacantia is very, uh, this is the characteristic of Jacantia hybrid, in the, the primary hybrid. Uh, all frame, I think I have two more of this size. Okay, I think they're 350, 15 years old. You know, this, 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 this is for, I have, I will share, share two, have a, it's something for, for you for breeding, for collection. Uh, but Jacantia, the nice thing about Jacantia is, uh, they are slow grower, but they very, very dominant on the flower shape, on the spotting, but they're not dominant on the size of the plant. Only on the primary hybrid. But once it become more advanced hybrid, I will show you some example. How do you go check it here? Actually, really simple. Now, can you give me the plant? I was pouring plant for the Jack and Deer for the talk. And this is the first batch of the Jacantia Alba. Remember the Alba one? And good, how many flowers? It's a lot, a lot of flower. But like about, there's another story about Jacantia and Alba. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna a uh, parking in for Fel Fanatic. If you're not a member of Fel Fanatic yet, uh, I'm a kind of volunteer for Fel Fanatic. And as a member benefit, then will, I will be offer a PowerPoint program free, right? Okay, free for the member. When is it? November? December. December, okay. The development of the Harlequin fan analysis, okay. So that actually involved with Jack and Tia. So that program is going to be almost a, a, a it's the same program, but I refine it. The program I gave it at the War Orchid Conference in Miami almost 15 years ago. So if you that's a member benefit. So if you want to join Paraphanetic. <laughs> so this is the Jack and Tia Alba. Okay. It's still in the four inch pot. This is about five only five years. Okay. So it does not have to get very big. Okay. This is Jack and Tia Alba. Look at it. Look at how many flowers. Okay, this 
and we still have some uh, 555 we have some of the uh, seat inside and we also have room inside like this okay so we done all the boring for you now jack and tear alba actually if you look at the leaf jack and tear alba have a little bit more target it cannot really tear until the flower they're very similar this is jack and tear the samba okay samba is another very very sought after because most of jack and tear crosses a strand is a white ivory white with red spot but samba is another area uh, from the samba area uh, they have more of the yellow background and that is the, the strand we, we haven't released yet because we just got them about two months ago and I don't like to sell them when I release them I gotta go to at least two three months before they are okay and I now this is they have since the air shipment from from Taiwan from my my, my breed, the breeder they have put out new root already so this is why I feel comfortable to sell to you you I, this is why I don't like some of the vendor you know uh, uh, sell them what they call fresh out the box <laughs> because that is can a lot of things can go wrong when they just sell on the box and so it is how we do it so far jacket here okay so the lighting okay on the jacket here think of it like just like uh you it's going to be a shady shadier than banana remember the slow grower where they come from in the in indonesia is not on the top of the tree they are actually on the lower end of the tree a lot of very heavy and dense so this is what they slow grow slow growing but they only get big when they're in the jungle of indonesia because they are maybe 100 degree 80 percent humidity and the at night temperature rarely really go down below 85 degree and that's where the leaf keep so they stay as a vegetative stage okay so only when they have a monsoon in the summertime that the weather will cool off and that's what jack and tea are, always flower in the summertime okay jack and tea never flower in the springtime okay they always flower in the summertime because it's native country where they come from only have got monsoon in the middle of summer that's what and then the, the weather cool off okay now the lighting is shadier okay never got it as much light as your corner surrey valentina because anything that with that they have they can tell higher light okay and another thing about jack and tia is they actually if you feel it they are actually thicker than Berlina and valencia so in that mean they actually can more forgive it uh, if you forgot the water so the most critical is the temperature okay where I put them, they like to be below 85 in the summertime. Okay, so when I put it in my greenhouse, I put it by the way the, in the summertime where the water come out. Okay, so if you are indoor grower, you know, go in the in the uh, under light, you okay, you don't worry about it. But we have customers driven for that you go okay, okay outside, never put it under your tree because you get a lot of rain in the summertime. And so much rain, it might water might stay here. So I would suggest you put all your uh, fern uh, I know lots of people that they put it in the basket and then hang it on a tree, let it go. Uh, it's kind of dangerous uh, because it's too valuable. Put it under the gutter of your house. So any place that can prevent from the natural rain to it. Okay, and then uh, a lot of places under the gutter by the wall maybe too shady for your Canaria or Dendrovian or Vanda you know what perfect for them leave it there but I would suggest always put a fan any type of any type of fan is better than nothing or I would put especially Florida I have a lot of I used to show in Miami for Laudio a lot of customers in South Florida Central Florida your, your summertime right now is hot and humid always put a invest on the very good quality fan okay and i would leave a fan out 24 hours constantly have air circulation on that because that uh the previous podcast the air circulation especially jacket here uh take this for example i do not like to put it on the bench because on the bench the is air for the got covers much so i this is the one area there you know that the 
it's not hanging it's not mounted because the mounted I'm too dry here so I hang them up by the sidewalk and on the wall or the tree so that's constantly have air going through the leaf and the like that and also you can also do it so I can also tilt it that way okay all this are also tilted on the wall okay I another day I was to do a, a Jamie maybe suggest do a live pre-show to see with Jack and Tia how we grow them uh, but I always paint it on by the wall and then tilt it in the angle so I rarely have crown rock problem because I always tilt it at a 15 degree angle and that's how the Jack and Tia grow in natural in the, in the jungle of Indonesia okay and with the moss because it's where the water come up, uh, fan come up. I, re I only check the water once a week. And this one here, you notice that it's actually not too wet. I let them dry between water because Jack and Tia are actually, because they're so thick, they are actually more forgiving. They like it to be a little dry between you watering. Okay. This is what I like to see on the roof, on the Jack and Tia. So you don't want the leaves to flatten out on the bench, is the thing? No, I, I never put them on the bench. The, the, the bench, because that way they're so, they're so flat, the water tends to stay here or here, okay? So I always like to hand them any of the, the, the slow-growing species. So I let air do this. I, just, I can just hand it here. Voila. So any extra air, you see here, constantly go through here and then cool off the leaf temperature okay because the the summertime is the most critical you know uh, our summer hot summer month is said August our summer just begin I know some of you are going to fall already our summer just actually begin and, and last week we have over a week of 105 and the coolest part of greenhouse is like coming up even the water for the uh, the cool pad is over 85 so uh, but the, the trick the help him is a constant air movement okay and I'm very excited about this one here so we should keep everybody posted because I don't know my assist, my assistant Brian Juan will be busy with the Jagantia and Brian look at this look at all the flower bird coming from Jagantia Alba how exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That's been since two years. You've had those for two years. Now. I have at least two years, yes. Yeah. yeah. More yeah. than two years I've been watching them. More yeah, more than two, two years. years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, and it's still in the same path. So, a lot of people say, how, how long the, the moss will last? You know what? I let it dry between water. And I also do not water in the summertime right, right now. Uh, uh, not feeding about Jack and Tia. I do not feed it very heavy. And never, I know, for Florida customer, never put slow release fertilizer on them. Never. Okay. I will do another segment about so slow release. Okay. I always you like to use liquid because you have more control. Like right now, I in the summertime, I only use my fertilizer and I use as a forty application. I do not pour the nutrient into the potting media because the jacintia itself is a slow grower you know okay they don't like to be pushed to be you know there's a lot of species especially jacintia they like to do their own thing they don't like to be pushed a lot of fertilizer you know that's you know that's why you never see them at trader joe or home depot they, they just need to take their time if you if you apply the same theory the way they the push for the trader joe or home depot this will be gone they died right away because they just there's so much you can push uh, and you get to respect the plant not the way they are but if you concentrate the light low light good air movement and in the hot summer month like right now before the flower we very little we never put water in the party media we do a lot of foliar feeding and that's why I I, I don't have to brag of my my fertilizer but not every fertilizer can do a foliar feeding because they're so refined. A lot of the, uh, and this is actually very 
it's cheaper for you because it only takes a uh, better concentrated because we made this for ourselves. Only take a, a small teaspoon per gallon of water. Some of the bigger fertilizer maybe sounds cheaper, but it takes five tablespoons. Okay, and they have a lot of impurity in there. So not every fertilizer can do as a foliar feeding. You notice that any of this did not have any tip burn. Now, Jacantia is the most sensitive. If they have any bad fertilizer, even just a foliar feeding or in the, in the party media, you're gonna have a lot of tip burn right away. That's how it's respond. You see the tip burn here? Nothing. Okay. And this one here, have a, they have a new leaf coming up. You see the shine? I didn't wax them. They just uh, they respond from the, uh, the fertilizer and, me and mega dry. So this is very good. And I just foliar feed it. You know, every other week when I spray it, and I have a spray, okay? Um, so this is it. This is the jacket here. And this is very exciting, especially coming with the alba, okay? So, uh, but I, we don't have a whole day to talk about. I can talk about this for the next five hours, about the whole, just on subject of jacket here, alba. But come to the uh, the program uh, for the fellow fanatic member. That's when we, is more specific um, for education, if you really want to know about Fiona Mapsa. But for Jack and Tia, uh, it would, it's actually now is a very exciting time because uh, all the Jack and Tia that we, especially from my nursery, they are from C, and they're not just only from C, but they also, we get it from four different five breeders. We have a four different strand. We have a dark chocolate, we have a samba, we have an ivory white. So even in the 70s and 80s, you cannot touch this because every plant will be like two, three thousand dollars in back in 1980, 1975. Because when it's imported from Indonesia, and because of this, they can be this big. But it's in Indonesia, you can't even find jacantia in the jungle anymore. They got wiped out from over collecting and also from lumber industry. Okay, so it's very important that we are actually uh, trying to uh, grow it from sea and also spread it out and so now the, the, the exciting thing about jack and tea is so important many of you have bought this one remember the uh forest mask okay look at the leaf the jack and tea does not give you the big giant leaf but it always gives you this waxy you see how the leaf is very thick that's what nice thing about Jack and Tia. I'm gonna put it this one here. Okay. And the influence of Jack and Tia is tremendous. When Jack and Tia start, this is about five, this is 10 years after. I first saw the first uh, Harlequin hybrid uh, is back in 1996. Okay. Now, this have Jack and Tia five generation back. And this is what a wonderful thing about Jack and Tia, they keep the plant very husky, you see? In a big. And Jack and Tia also keep the trim. It's very dominant in the flower shape, a very long shape. Uh, you wanna touch this? Come here. Huh? Is it real? Oh, it's real. Yeah, it's, but feel the plastic, right? It could be plastic flower. It's, <laughs> it's so very thick. thick. Yeah, and how about the leaf? Yeah, very thick. Okay. Yeah, very, thick. very different than banana, right? Okay, good. Yeah. So Jack and Tia have dominant on the flower shape. Always give you a very long shape, uh, and also influence on the spotting. Okay, it passes on to the very dominant, very thick. Uh, um, it feels as even almost thick as symbiotic. Okay, and and. The jacket here in cronin, they also have a mutation gene, and that's how they get this harlequin here. This all had jacket here in the background, and with a white. Okay, so do not scare of jacket here. Okay, if you want to know more about jacket here and the crosses, on my website orchestra.com, on the search box, just type in jacket here. Okay, all fair enough, and it'll pull out anything with jacket here, primary, hybrid. But this had jacket here in the background. This is ox black face. 
This is with a Jack and Tea Andu of uh, German lavender. Usually, you would, you cannot get this kind of deep fuchsia red with a typical Shuriana pink red green. You have to have a Jack and Tea in the background, the, the Harlequin, okay? And this one here has been blooming since uh, Mother's Day. Mother's Day was the, the last flower open in May. The first flower open is all, and it opens slower because with the jacket here, that's another advantage. The fl one flower will not be that standard white open really fast in the hot weather. No, they will take their time because the, the flower substance is so thick, it needs more time to develop. So anything with a harder print, a jacket here in the background, you're gonna expect, even though it's grow smaller, but that's grower's problem, okay, not for you. Uh, you're gonna have more shelf life for you as an enjoyment. And look at the leaf. Also, like the jacket here, thick. When they're that thick, they might, that means more succulent. They, they can store more water in there, so they're more forgiving. So it's actually very user-friendly if you are a beginner, okay? They're wonderful because they store a lot more water themselves. So if you forgot the water, don't worry, they can handle it. <laughs> they have the most stress. Lucky resistant. me. Okay. And the jacket here, not just on the center, but they are also doing on the miniature now. Look at this one here. This is a jacket here in the background. That's so cute. Yeah, this is the, uh, uh, don't worry, I, I will have a number because this one have the show, uh, show and tell there is half Shuriana, but this is Jack and Tia in the background. Would you believe that? Whoa. And look at the leaf. Another trademark. Thick, hard, erect. And but this is Chrome. This is MC number. Does that Jamie say this is MC one seven five five? So MC is a Chrome. So they you, they you will get what you get it for. Okay. But is you can get it as a miniature. Okay. Look at this. You can get it. Uh, this all has jacket here background, but I love about jacket here in French. Look at the leaf. Very, very handsome leaf. The flower a lot, even though it flower lasts a long, the flower will last extra minimum four to six weeks or possibly even longer. If you leave, if you put it inside in an air conditioned house or if you live in uh, Orange uh, Pacific Northwest, it's really cool right now. Okay. Har and you can do Harlequin miniature again. The trademark, the deep forest leaf, and this. Okay, and this is actually the same chrome. So a lot of time, Jack and Tia, the Harlequin, because they have jump, what I call jumping jean. Uh, I will explain more in December's talk. Not uh, something like a mutation. It, it become more even concentrated. But this is the same chrome. But they all very long lasting. So you can have a miniature Harlequin, and guess what? This is a jacket in that background. Oh, and then we have Equestrian, Nandinia, Amabarus. It's fun, it's fun, okay. So Jagantia is another exciting, pangeous and spacey to have. We have this one earlier, okay, yep. Yeah, this is Ox Madonna. So, if you want to try Jack and Tia, uh, we have two seeding coming up. Uh, so this is what I call a seeding size. You know, in normal, it, this is a good size to have. Uh, this is about almost two, almost two years out of flask. It's NF2581. Uh, this is the one I, I put, it, this is the, the regular uh, red Jack and Tia-ish with a green one. So this is very exciting. And this is the pure, I have two sides. I have the, this side, obviously it's more money. And this is the, the other size, seating size of the Gigantia Alba, is, is this right here. Between, the, between this to this, about another two to three years. And okay. that's 2581? Yeah. And Alba is 552. This is not there. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll release it here, right? Can you turn area to release the problem this one? What's the other one? Uh, this one here, the Alba one is 552. Five, five, 
Five five two is on the west side, right? Okay. Yeah. How are we doing so far? Anybody about any question about Jagantia? Jagantia is actually very, very good, especially if you live in a tropical area, it's hot and some on a warm side because it's a species they do not like to be on the cold. Uh, so they they usually prefer the night temperature is about minimum is 58 degrees. So uh, Florida, South Florida is, is perfect. Uh, greenhouse, but well, under light. A treat as a house pet. Uh, you can even in New Jersey, you can leave it outside until the night temperature about 58, uh, and then you can put it inside. Okay, how are we doing? Any questions so far? Okay, so again, the dragon here is a actually very important species. Okay, so I like to do a quality called a series of the we always start with the species and let you know about the species. If you like this kind of format, let me know because I would think about doing the uh, Dorite of Peranasa Porcherima, which is the summer blooming one right now. So that kind of teach you about and show you the species. We always come with, you know, even if you're in the judging program, you always start with the species. You gotta know your species before you know the hybrid, okay? And once you, then you can start relating the culture uh, requirement on each one of them, okay? Will they grow well indoors? Crystal's asking. Oh, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Pretty much, they still fan It's just a different type of fan analysis. This is why, uh, by knowing, by I hopefully I can educate and share my knowledge with through this podcast. Because not all, even though fan analysis is a is a very only talk, is a not very big group like Canada, but they still have their diversity. Okay, this this uh, so. That's why you want to know a lot. That's why the label is important. Okay, all this label will tell you the parentages, where they come from, and that will make you a better grower because then you know what it was involved. Because otherwise, not you cannot just treat all fenanops under the sun because they do have variation. And okay, yeah, Norman, quick qu one question. So, all these fenanopsis has jacantia behind it. Ha no, 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 uh, harlequin. Part of it. Yeah, I see. Not not all of them, but there's some. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, a lot of time, like Jeff like some of the what Jeff like the, the spotting. Mm -hmm. uh, what had jacket here? Yeah, not necessary because there are some other species will contribute the spotting, like the Dominiana, uh, Studeriana, and Tetrapterus. But the one that's going to be dominant on the flower shape, the round shape, especially now. I don't have a perfect example. But my uh, question is, is the, the Jagantia, especially any, anything of your jack novelty with a really nice round shape, you have to have a Jagantia because some other species, if you look at Bonina and Boreense, they're very star shaped. They're narrow, right? Just like the trappers, they're narrow. The, this only species can the fill this up is the Jagantia. So this is why Jagantia was very highly used in the 70s. 80 because they give you that round shape and it's very important uh, that's what the judges like you know, everybody always had a perfect round you know that's the that's the idea of the profession yeah, yeah but you mentioned that me, oh, okay that's beautiful that's it. <laughs> you mentioned that jacantia grows slower yes so when you have jacantia on these hybrids do we expect that they're a slow grower no, as well not anymore because the, uh, a lot of this about four or five generation from the species Okay, the, so and that's why I said earlier, Jagan Tia dominant on the size of the flower, the shape of the flower, the spotting, but it doesn't get dominant on the size of the plant or the speed of the growing. Okay, so that's good. Uh, but, so this is why Jagan Tia have this ideal species for a lot of this wonderful shape. But the disadvantage of Jagan Tia itself is they are slow grower, they're not as hardy. So a lot of the Jagantia uh, Harlequin or Jagantia primary, you will never see it at the mass market producer because they cannot stand, they cannot ship coal. Now in order to the distribution point from distribution center, the uh, wholesaler greenhouse to the distribution center, to the, the Home Depot or supermarket, 
sometimes they be going to a long trucking okay and for supermarket they be they usually ship with the produce truck 35 38 degree Fahrenheit so they don't like that so that's wonderful for food but that's just not good because everybody everybody is so boring <laughs> okay so Jack and Tia is it, it's, a, it's a fun subject and there's something that I, I personally be uh, growing them and so I, I like it make it simple so forget about what you read or just all this kind of stuff the simple rule is they slow grow so do not try to push them no do not put slow release fertilizer on, on them okay so in the summertime the, this three month is the hottest month is this is when they're gonna flower okay I actually reverse I, I do not feed them I do not put fertilizer into the potty media but I only do the uh, foliar feeding with my uh, with my ultimate nutrient okay and that way oh, I can reduce the salt might be in the potty media okay remember my model always less is more okay that's why I, I make the fertilizer uh, more concentrated uh, it's only use a teaspoon per gallon of water okay don't do not try only use according to ratio do not try okay I want, to, I want more growth <laughs> I want to double <laughs> it's not gonna work that way okay? <laughs> uh, it, it, well the plant gonna get damaged uh, they usually have a tip burn okay you should usually if you see tip burn, tip burn uh, any of you orchid okay by the time they show tip burn a little bit what happened down below the root tip already damaged and that's why they cannot pour in the water to support it and that's why you get tip burn by the time you see the tip burn you pretty much know there's some damage on the root too much what we call salt damage uh, so this is why I always say once a month when one of the, the, the week that you do the watering I do what, what I call the drench I double water uh, sometimes even three times because my water here in the summertime is really salty because you know our EC the salt you don't want on the EC it is uh, cut the three you don't want it about 1.0 but our we all has water shortage by the time the water coming from the wonderful mountain of Colorado go to Arizona here is really about 0.8 in August that means I only have 0.2 PPN to put fertilizer in there and that's why when I developed this fertilizer here back in the 80 in S school had to be really refined it's almost a reagent grade that way that can uh, when at this difficult month in the summertime when water is so uh, salty I can do foliar feeding and in turn if you are going at the Pacific Northwest or Northeast your winter time you really cold right the, the short is, day is, is uh day is short but you still need to feed it you cannot just pour you cannot pour water uh pour fertilizer water into a potty media uh even sometimes in bark they may, they never dry out so this is the time you do for your feeding and this is why a good fertilizer will come along you spray it you spray the leaf when i said when it's a for your feeding is uh you just spray the folder you can make a dilution of a, a liter spray the leaf and that can absorb through the foliage okay otherwise most of them will just give you a very ugly deposit on them <laughs> and, and, and it won't do anything for you okay they fragrant uh jacantia as a species itself doesn't have fragrance but some of the hybrid like this one here they've been crossed with Benina and Valencia and and, and, and Borean said they do have fragrance so that's why um the seeding okay with the jack india background uh we might put down fragrant but that means you usually have more than 50 percent so if you buy seeding there's always another 40 percent or 49 percent that have wonderful flower but it might not have the, the gene from the all the other fragrant species so so this is what nf and with before you buy any item the nf before you read the description there's always a disclaimer that this is a scene it will it might not look the same as the photograph they are and they have their variation okay but seeding is fun everybody uh, have a very good response when I offer seeding because uh, once you flower a very a seeding everyone is like different and if you and then you the only one had that particular unique seeding okay? 
and they all all came up beautiful. There's no ugly one. Okay, <laughs> then okay, are we ready for the uh pop show and tell? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, Brian, what do we have? Oh, credit cards ready. Credit card ready. Okay, Brian, want to show the Canada again? Oh, that's pretty bad. Ooh, I like this one. See, I we didn't stake it. Okay, this is one of my favorite, and believe it or not, this has fifty percent Toshi Oki, which is the big standard, yellow related. And this one, if in the summertime they flower because the heat, they flower more orange. When they flower in the summer, in the winter time, this is. Angel Kiss by Toshi Oki. And Toshi Oki is a, a, a very good semi alba, the yellow we read it from Hawaii. Cross with Angel Lip. Okay, so if you have in the wintertime when it's cold, this is actually more reddish. Okay, but in the summertime, the yellow will take over. Okay, that's why the, the, the temperature does affect on the anthocyanin on the orchid. So this is a wonderful. Compact, yes, this is heat tolerance. You can go in Arizona, you can flower in a homestead. It is heat tolerant. And this one here uh, was in my greenhouse, and it's actually flower in the greenhouse last week. It was at 95 inside because the house outside was so hot. <laughs> okay, so you can take the heat. Okay, and this is the oh, the, oh yeah. this is just a, this is a young plant. If you tie the so it's an eagle eye white angel. You got an FCC for Hawaii. Uh, this is a wonderful white. Okay, the flower is so small because the plant is young. But what I like about this good. white <laughs> is small. Well, no, they can be this big. They can get out 18 inches. I like the way the plant grow. The plant is. This is the what a mod. This you might say, oh, I have a lot of white. No, this is the what I call the modern white because the compact base. Okay. And again, I usually like to, once the once the once the dry sheet is like this, I usually like to take it off because it has done the purpose. And by doing so, I can expose possible and also a good time to in, inspect it, make sure there's no meat, uh, insect high underneath there. And the easiest way to put this off is right after you water. So this is dry right now. It's hotter. All right. Everybody got a number. Ah. Okay. Hotter bin. Mini. I don't know why they, they flower so weird. This is half Gigantia in the background. And one of my perennial favorite. We, this is a few items that we actually redo it and over and over. This is actually half 50% Fernanasa Suriana. But wow. you. Yep. And that the, the only th way you can tell the Shuriana is the lip, the white lip is from Shuriana. But the substance is from Gigantia. But look at the size of the print. And the, this, the, the trademark from Gigantia inference always give you that thick, dark forest green. Okay, and the flower can last a long time. I'm gonna pass that to you and uh, see if you like it. And this. It's actually in bud right now. We're going to send a puffy bud. And this is going to flow all the way to Valentine's for you. It was that long last day. Okay. Next. Oh. Oh, wow. Uh, we show this again because we saw out uh, about two, 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 a month ago. Uh, this is the one of the kind. It's a, look at the. So this is a perfect example of the Jacantia inference. Look at the leaf, the, the flower shape. Okay. Now this is the funny one. This one here uh, is a jack a harlequin. The the crown that is not stable. So we have a flower AV one of them to make sure they are the the true harlequin. So this crown is a wonderful crown. Even though when we it's not on the website. Okay, good. Uh, Brian, can you release it? <laughs> Eric release right now. <laughs> so, so what do I know? <laughs> yeah, we actually sold out. Uh, and, and so Brian is going to tell Eric to release right now. So you can order again. 
I love this one here. We flower every single one of them to make sure they are true to type. Okay. This is the classic inference of jacket here. Inference. Hey, look at the size of the leaf. It's not big. Okay. So this is why this is the, this is why it's the MC for this kind of orchid. We had to do cloning to make sure they're stable and true to type. But there are some clone. The harder point is that's some kind of variation. They get them all move. Okay. So um, Eric want to release this one. Okay, now this one here, if you like this, you want to act fast because I only, I think it's about less than 20, okay? This is the remake of Purple Mountain and Purple Mountain is Pochurima by Violacea and this is back to Violacea again, but, but it's using the Violacea Sumatrana, that's why it is so big. Uh, if you remember the uh, Kenny Shuver, it's actually Sururia, it's very small. Uh, again, there's one shot of Pochurima, which is the topic next week. Uh, Pochurima is a species from uh, Thailand. They always flower in the summertime, okay? Regardless, they will never flower in the middle of wintertime. This is why you want to get this for your collection, because that way you have all different orchid for all different season. And then you got two shots of Violacea. And one shot of the Violacea is Sumatrana, another uh, variation of Violacea. And the other one probably the, the orchid form. Anyway, but there's about less than 20 in there. If you like this, I love this one. It's actually the frost substance is incredible. It's, it has two shots of Violacea. And this one is, is fragrance, okay? Some will have fragrance, some will not have fragrance, but... Look at those roots. Drop those roots. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's root <laughs> In that little pot. What? Well, uh, well, less is more. <laughs> All those roots. Okay, and I'm not sure. I forgot I showed this or not. But look at this. I want to know. I'm not sure. We have a lot of new member. I, I oh, this is like the black for the leaf. Again, this is have the Shuriana background. And this one here. Even the plant without flower is still very pretty. It's Pinot Cherry, oh yeah. It's Roger Dariana by Tiffany Christopher. So this have a lot of, I uh, have Stuart Dariana, a marvelous for Mosana, and Shuriana, the, the fragrant one. And this does have fragrance. So this is the stage that will ship to you. Very handsome plant. Look at the- it has nice leaves. Very, the leaves are very, very nice. Well, if you go under light or windowsill, Beautiful. Can. And even without the flower. Even without the flower. And also very, because the leaf is very compact, it's actually a good one to try for mountain. For mountain. Okay. And now this is a brand new one. Wow, look at this. Nice shade. Nice shade for the winter time. Okay. Uh this is Tiffany Christopher Highway by so this one have Jacantia, no, 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 in the background. So very hard substance. And it's very hard to get pure white. So this is about twice as, as the size of regular banana. But because you have, it's not there yet too. Oh, wow. We have a talk with Eric. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Uh, why am I coming back? He's getting the last one released. Huh? <laughs> He's still working on releasing the last one. No, I'm the busy. You don't need to release it. Okay. Oh, I could be I'm ahead of myself. Okay. Uh, again, it's, it's also very fragrant. And, uh, and look at the leaf. I love the leaf. Uh, Brian, give me the tray of the Jordan. Okay. Wow. Now this is fun. I might have showed this before, but I forgot. Okay. Uh, this is the remake of Jaho Delight. And Jaho Delight got an award of quality. That means 
but water quality is for the breed for for breeding. And what I have, what I did with I did an experiment with Mega Drive on this. So and we put this since April this year, springtime, in our in our outdoor in the our shady pad patio. And again we this is part of the stress test. Yes, and this guy sustained the 105 last week and almost zero percent humidity. We water three times a week because it's so dry and hot. But this is an interesting hybrid, 2265. This is a remake of the egg very successful cross. Look at the size on this one here. Okay. I better hide this, otherwise Jamie gonna take it for <laughs> look at look at this polaric. Don't show Ooh. Jamie. Okay, so get this print because uh, Mr. Jaho only released this cross remake to us. He didn't even release it in Taiwan because he wanted to make sure he have advantages for the next breeding. Uh, but this is amazing because I, I seen the original cross before, but this is a remake. Uh, I don't know what he did, but I think this is even better than the one before. But I'm amazed at the size of flower. Okay. Maybe because they only have supporting one flower, but oh my gosh. Uh, this will make, remember the old Don Marie? The can get really tall and, and, and skinny. Now this is gonna be much improved than Don Marie. Uh, it took the call because the other top parent is a Dendrovian Tobotensis, Jacantium. So, and I have proven it can, I can, I can treat it as a Cymbidium in Southern California. So if you go in, in North, uh, San Francisco, you can put it outside, put it uh, more light than your Masteveria. But this is a very, very warm tolerance of uh, Dendrogian. And the, the type of flower, the flower will last in uh, typical about two, three months. Okay? Next. Oh, the first one. Okay. This one finally flower. It has more flower than the springtime. This is a, a lot of you have this, uh, but we have a lot of new member. I'm going to show, show you. This is the first time we have the novelty, the Amborians, the Berina, crossed with the white multi floor. So uh, Sunny had this, Sunny loved them because they flower again. Uh, I think uh, a lot of you, uh, what's it, Elantator just told, uh, posted, she got in this one to flower on the second time. Because remember, 50% of this it had the novelty, so they can flower again in the heat. So this is a wonderful heavy substance, and the best part is very sweet fragrance, and also very good for mountain too. Okay, and this one here I don't have a picture yet, but uh, Crystal will give you the name. This is a, another small plant, big red and fragrance. Brian is dancing in the back here. Okay. Okay, but last one, but not the least one. Uh, one more. One more after that? Oh, no, no. I have a number. Okay, but what's, what size are we selling? This size, right? Okay. This is my sample print. This is the one that Alfred has one too. Okay. Okay, can you take it higher? Okay, I'm gonna show you. Okay, don't worry. This is good, kind of loving care. Oh. Dendrovian hippiki. Okay, this is only about four years old. They always flower on the old grow. See here, this is on the old leaf. Ivy flower and make it right. Okay, so what I usually have to do is see all this right here. The flower spice is coming, and this is all leaf. It kind of pour it. This is a preparation. Remember, I got this leaf spot. Okay, this is okay. Remember now, we do not spray any fungicide. So it's natural to have spot like this. Just that like we have freckle. I have freckle. But this is a plant response. Plant will isolate the fungi. Okay, all right. I do not. So for those of you who are new, uh, my nursery, we don't, we spray, we had a spray pesticide, but we do not use any fungicide. So I don't have the 
on all the leaf okay they gonna get this leaf, the black spot that's okay so what I'm doing right now is to clean up all the for this hippie because they always flower from the old growth and the old one always in the middle so you want to remove all the old leaves so get the sun come down to it next year this will be all flower so the bigger the better it become a nice uh nice specimen so this is a sample uh we have different sizes look at this for sale and they don't take a lot of space this is just involved with two species one is a cool growing species one is hot growing species and dendrovian hibiki is probably the, the most successful dendrovian i think uh last of all, it, i can put this we actually did a, a treatment uh, uh we did a gift four years ago a boomy gift for eric to use a gift okay and that then draw it as a gift as a trial on his gift department and the box was lost somewhere it finally got returned two months later and we opened it up the flowers still open and that's what the dendrovian this is uh, it has some kind of very strange photosynthesis it probably does in plant physiology it probably has very slow not very active uh, metabolism so the flower it doesn't submit of faded so maybe they have a fountain of you maybe somebody can do cosmetic surgery uh, cosmetic research the flower doesn't fade flower lasts about three months okay so this is anymore that's it this is, okay. this is the last one so we got something better uh, and, and again then during hibiki they can flower in the springtime because they have a cool growing species but their best season season is now in the summertime august to set uh august to october so if you don't if you don't have a lot of things in flower in the middle of summer this is the one to get and a, a, a plant like this uh brian remember we have a show in august right yeah. that's the pick season august and they always from all the way to thanksgiving if you put it in the greenhouse in the house where it's cooler not outside uh you can get it even extended to uh december remember they all have so many shoot are uh, just coming up popping up right now okay all right thank you and i will see you next week and next week i'm gonna do uh a talk about the final house of Poturima. okay and i'll see you next week <laughs>